This video explains how to use Cheetah and Position Dodge in a GG.2 plot simultaneously in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you an example and for this example we first need to create an example data frame as you can see in lines 2 to 5 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data set called data is appearing and we can print the first six rows of this data frame to the RStudio console by applying the head function as you can see in line six of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our example data frame contains three columns. The first column is our main group indicator. The second column is our subgroup indicator and the third column contains random numeric values. Now, if you want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines eight and nine of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line nine of the code. And then after running this line of code, we are able to draw a ggplot2 box plot with position dodge, as you can see in lines 11 to 15 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right in our studio that we have created a ggplot2 box plot with position dodge with a width of 0.7. Now, if we want to add cheetah on top of this plot, then we might try to apply the code that you can see in lines 17 to 22 of the code. So lines 17 to 21 of the code are exactly the same as in the previous lines of code. However, this time I'm trying to add points with a position cheetah and a width of 0.1 on top of our plot. However, if you run lines 17 to 22 of the code, you can see that the cheetah does not work properly because all the cheetah points are shown in the middle of the grouped box plot. However, in this example, I want to show you how to move those points to the corresponding subgroups. And this is what we can do in the next step in lines 24 to 30 of the code. So in this case, I'm once again using the same syntax as in the previous examples until the line where I'm specifying the geo box plot. However, then in this case, I'm adding the position cheetah dodge function instead of the position cheetah function. And within the position cheetah dodge function, I'm specifying the cheetah width to be equal to 0.1, as I have already tried in the previous example. However, then I'm also specifying the dodge width to be equal to 0.7. So please note that the dodge width within the position cheetah dodge function is the same as the width that I have specified within the position dodge function. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that our graphic is updated at the bottom right. And this time you can see that all the points are shown on the corresponding subgroups and not only in the middle of each group anymore. You can also see that at this point, the points that we have cheated are shown with black colors. So to make our plot more readable and to make it prettier, we can also change the colors and the PCH of these points, as I will show you in the last lines of code of this tutorial. So as you can see in lines 32, to 38 of the code, I'm using the same syntax as in the previous graphic creation code. However, this time I'm also specifying the aesthetics of our geom points to be equal to our subgroups. And I'm also changing the type of points using the PCH argument. So after running lines 32 to 40 of the code, you can see that our graphic is updated once again. And this time the color, the filling color of our points corresponds to the subgroups in our box plot. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. 
I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.